Hello and welcome to the Excel VBA object series. In this video, we will talk about the workbook object. The workbook object represents a single Excel file or workbook within the workbooks collection, which comprises all open workbook objects. We can refer to the workbook object to get or set certain properties of the Excel files, to open, save, close, delete existing files or workbooks, or to create or add a new workbook, and many other things. And we can use workbook events to run a macro when the workbook opens, or before saving, or before closing a workbook. Let's see how to reference the workbook object. We use workbooks to refer to the workbook collection object. As you see, when I add a dot, we get the list of properties and methods that apply to the workbooks collection object. So, for example, we can count the number of open workbooks, we can add a new workbook to the workbooks collection, and we can open or close workbooks. We'll look into that later. We refer to an individual workbook with workbooks, again with S, and the index or the name of the workbook in parentheses. So, workbooks 1 would refer to the first workbook the workbook that, that was first activated. We can also use the name. So book1.xlsx would refer to the workbook with that name. But if the workbook has not yet been saved, as it is the case with this workbook here, as you see, it only shows the name, not the extension. In that case, you don't need to add the extension yet. Then when we add the dot, we get the list of properties and methods for the workbook object, which is different than the list we've seen for the workbooks collection. We can see the full list of properties and methods in the appendix section of the Excel VBA object sky. As you see here, there are a few properties and methods for the workbooks collection object. And here below, we see the list of properties and methods for the workbook object. So for example, we can activate the workbook. There are two other ways to refer to the workbook object, and one is active workbook, which, as you probably guess, it refers to the workbook which is active at that moment, and another is with this workbook, which refers to the workbook with the macro. We often use object variables to reference a workbook object. So in that case, we need to declare the variable. So for example, let's call it WB as a workbook. Note that we are using the singular here, and then we can set WB to, for example, the active workbook or a specific workbook with workbooks and the name or the index of the workbook. Then we can use the object variable as any other workbook object. So here we can, for example, save the workbook or close the workbook. We can create or add a workbook simply with workbooks add. The new workbook will have a default name, usually book one, book two, etc. That new workbook becomes the active workbook. So now we can say active workbook and apply any property or method to that new workbook. And for example, we could save the workbook as, and here we need to specify the full file name. So the path and the workbook name. So if we just write book2.xlsx, it will actually save the workbook in the default folder. And that default folder is something we can change either manually or with VBA. So if I run this, it creates a new workbook and it has been saved as book2 in the default folder, which in this case is the documents folder. We've seen how to change the path of the default saving folder in the previous video using the application object. Now you can also specify here where exactly to save the workbook. So you could say C backslash users username Excel files or whatever. Of course, if that path actually exists in your drive. We can apply any other properties or methods to that workbook, or we can also close the workbook. So if I run this now, but comment this because the workbook is already there, 
we are closing that workbook. Now, to open a workbook, we also need to specify the full path and name file. And we use the open method of the workbooks collection object. So workbooks dot, we don't need to specify any workbook here. We are going to open a particular workbook, and then we need to provide the path and the workbook name. And it's easier to put that into a variable. So let's say my file, and then here we're going to say my file equals C, and we need to specify the exact path here for the workbook. Now, to make things easier, sometimes we want to open a workbook which is in the same path as the other workbook. In that case, we, we could write something like my path equals this workbook path. And then instead of writing the exact path, here we could say my path. And we need to put the backslash and the name of the file. So let's say book2.slxx. And we would declare those as string variables, both my path and my file. But I'm not going to run that because book2 was not safe in the same path as this workbook where we are writing the code. Book2 was actually saved in the default path. So then my path is actually the application default file path. Now if we run the macro, we are opening book2 again. Now if the file is not in your computer, it is for example on a SharePoint on the internet, the path is usually something like this. It starts with two backslashes and the address that you will get from your SharePoint. And if you open a file on the internet, um, that's going to be also different. The path is going to be something like HTTP with forward slashes in this case and the address. So that would be internet file and that will be internet SharePoint. So you need to pay attention to the path as well as the file name, of course. But you need to make sure the file actually exists before opening. Otherwise, it prompts an error. And you also need to check if the file is already open. Otherwise, it also prompts an error. So check out this video up here to see how to safely open a workbook in Excel. When opening a workbook, that becomes also the active workbook. And then we can, of course, apply any properties or methods to that workbook. And we're going to see some other properties and methods in a moment. You can also delete a workbook, and you need to specify the workbook again with either the index or the name. And the workbook ne needs to be open. If the workbook is not open, we can use the kill function. As you see, it requires the path and file name. We can actually delete an Excel file or any other file. As explained earlier, we often use object variables to reference workbooks. And when dealing with more than one workbook, we need to use several variables. Let me show you what I mean with this. For example, let's say we want to open another workbook and import some data into this workbook, this workbook where we are working now. And that could actually be book two here. So in that case, we would do like W1 as a workbook w2 as a workbook and before opening book 2 which is already open but but let's close it then we would do w1 equals at this workbook where we are writing the code then we could use workbooks open to open book 2 which was in application default path and book 2 xlsx now, this one becomes the active workbook. So we can set w2 equals active workbook. 
Now we have book one as W1, book two as W2, and we can easily reference each of them. For example, if we copy uh, a range in the second workbook into the first workbook, that would be something like this, but we're gonna cover that later when we talk about the worksheet object or the range object in this case. But that's how we would be dealing with multiple workbooks. So we could then close the first workbook and keep working with the second workbook, etc., etc. Let's see some other properties and methods of the workbook object. As we've seen earlier, we can get the name or the path of the active workbook or any workbook like that. And we would probably put that into a variable. Now, do not confuse the name property, of course, with the names property. And this refers to defined names. We can add a defined name in this workbook. And this is what you manually do go into formulas, define name. And you can see all the defined names in the workbook in the name manager. We do not have any. So that's something you can also do with the workbook object. Then, of course, you need to specify here the name and where or what it refers to and any other properties. We can also we can also set update links in a workbook to one of these three possibilities, or we can update a link, specifying the name of the link. We can change a link, or we can break a link as well. And every time we need to specify the name of the link as a string. We've seen before how to save a workbook, and if we use save as, and we specify the file name, we can also specify the file format, we can set a password, we can, we can decide if it's read only, and many other properties as you see here. But we can also set a password simply with active workbook or the workbook name and password, and whatever password you want to set. And that's encrypting the workbook with a password. Alternatively, or regardless, we can protect the workbook structure. And we can do it with or without a password. So the differences between protecting the workbook structure and encrypting the workbook with a password are explained in this other video up here. So have a look there if you don't know what I'm talking about. We can also get specific information about the workbook with the bulletins document properties. And then we need to specify, for example, let's say we want to get the author of the workbook. And we could put that, of course, into a variable to get the author of the workbook. Changing the parameter here, you can get the date, the day when the workbook was created. You can, get, you can also get when it was last modified or the user that modified the workbook and several other properties. Now let's have a look at workbook events. And to use workbook events, we need to go to this workbook right here. So if I double click this workbook and select workbook, then we get the list of workbook events on the right hand side. And by default, we get the workbook open event procedure. So any code we write here will run when we open the workbook. We can see the full list of workbook events also here in the appendix in the Excel VBA objects guide. So we could run a macro when the workbook is activated or when we install an add-in after saving the workbook or before closing or before saving the workbook and of course when opening the workbook and as you see there are many more possibilities. There are also events of the window object such as these three here at the workbook level and all these other events refer to the sheet object at the workbook level. So for example the sheet change event we can run a macro when changing the sheet for that particular workbook. We can also run a macro when adding a new sheet or when adding a new chart. So as an example with this one here, we could write a welcome message 
as we've seen in previous videos. And for example, if we add a sheet change event, you see we get different parameters here and we can refer to, to the exact sheet that is changing or the target range. And if you want to know more about that, please go and check the video about object events in this series. So that was an overview of the workbook object. In the next videos, we're going to talk about the worksheet object, the range object, and some of the other important objects in Excel VBA. See you then, and thanks for watching.